Hello Internet, uh, time for another Homebrew Z80 computer update. Uh, in my last video I showed you how I had built the world's most inconvenient uh, digital clock to show off the uh, real-time clock chip on the computer. Uh, I was running a program which would print the current time uh, out to my computer over the, the serial uh, channel each time I reset the computer. So the, the program would spit out the time and then halt and you had to hit reset uh, each time you wanted to to, uh, to see the time. Um, so I've put a bit of work into uh, the, the, the interrupt circuit on my computer now and I can now show you a slightly uh, less inconvenient digital clock if I kind of zoom into my laptop screen over here. Uh, you can see that it's it's automatically printing printing the time each second. Uh, I don't need to restart. This is just the same program running over and over again. And so what's happening here is uh, I have the the real time clock chip. Um, this has the capacity to generate a a periodic uh, interrupt, and I've got it configured to. Uh, to interrupt once, uh, sorry, twice a second, every every 500 milliseconds. Um, the Z80 has three different uh, interrupt modes, modes 0, 1, and 2. Uh, and I've got this set up to run in mode 2, which is kind of the, the most powerful by far. Um, and so what happens briefly is, here I have a, um, a 74-148 uh, logic chip. This is a... Um, uh, what do you call it? It's like a, a priority uh, decoder chip. There are eight uh, inputs on here, um, and if any one of them uh, goes low, so if you if you send an interrupt signal to one of them, um, there's an output which which goes low, and that's hooked up to the Z80 and says you know uh, up to the interrupt pin. Um, there are also three three output pins which uh, put out uh, you know a three bit uh, binary number. Of zero through seven, depending on the the highest numbered input, which is currently low. So you know if if uh, if interrupt number three is pulled low and only interrupt number three, it'll put out uh, a binary three on its outputs. If um if interrupt three and five are both pulled low, because five is higher, five takes priority and five gets put out on the binary outputs uh, on the outputs of the chip. Um, and so those three inputs are, um, you know, uh, sent over here to the 74540. This is um, an inverting uh, tri-state uh, buffer chip. When when the Z80 interrupt pin is brought low in mode two, what the Z80 does is uh, it sends out a, an interrupt acknowledge signal, and that enables the output of this buffer, and then it reads uh, the the three-bit output of this. Um, it's actually shifted up by one bit uh, in the way I find this chip, but I won't go into that. It it reads reads one byte uh, through its data bus, um, and then it looks it checks in its memory at an address uh, you know derived from from that byte it reads in, and then it jumps to that location. And so depending on which of your seven interrupts uh, is low, um, you can have the Z80 respond to that interrupt by jumping to any one of of eight uh, different locations in memory. So it's like a really uh, a really complicated dispatch system so you can have you know eight different interrupt handlers for eight different devices and you know whichever uh, the highest priority device which is currently interrupting will, will get service first and it, it works out really nicely and so uh, you know right now just to demo this I've got the the real-time clock hooked up to the highest uh, highest priority interrupt it's going off twice a second uh, the the interrupt handler that the Z80 is running is just uh, is has a little counter that kind of divides that interrupt down by two, and every second interrupt, i.e. every second, it uh, it spits out the the time to the screen. Um, so yeah, that's that's you know I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I didn't I didn't come up with this circuit by any means. I copied this or adapted this from a, an old article um, that I found for the the pardon me the Intel 8080 uh, processor. But um, you know, I there are a bucket load of homebrew Z80 uh, projects on the internet which have you know roughly the same capabilities as the the LM512 does right now. They've got a, a CF card and a you know serial outputs and a real time clock. I haven't actually seen one yet with a you know a proper nice uh, prioritized mode to interrupt system. Most of them, you know, either just have one device using 
interrupts, which is just hooked up to the int pin directly, or they use the interrupt and the non-maskable interrupt pin on the Z80, and they just have two interruptible devices. But with this setup, I can have up to eight devices um, running, which is, is really handy. So I hope to eventually have um, the, the real-time clock doing a periodic interrupt for... Uh, you know, for the, the system timer, so I can do uh, multitasking and that kind of thing. Um, there are also, gee, uh, the, the UART, um, my dual UART chip can do interrupts when there uh, is, you know, incoming data uh, from the serial channel or when it's ready to send to a serial channel. There are also two, I think, two 16-bit counters on there which can generate interrupts. Um, you know, and of course the, the CF card can interrupt when it's finished reading setters of the disk, so you know, I, I hate to be able to put those eight interrupts to, to good use and come up with a really nice interrupt driven system. Um, the other new thing on the board which I can show you today, uh, down here in this corner I have uh, I have the, the only, uh, only vintage chip on this board, even though the whole thing is kind of a, a very retro project. This is, a, um, this is an AY38912 uh, sound chip made by General Instruments, um, who are Microchip technology. These guys they make the the PIC microcontroller, um, and this same chip more or less was made under license by Yamaha under the name uh, YN2149. Um, this was a very prolific uh, sound chip uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s. It was used in um, lots of uh, arcade uh, arcade games, pinball games, um, lots of lots of home computers, uh, ZX Spectrum. Um, a lot of MSX computers in Japan, all kinds of machines. Um, you know, it's it's a, a great little chip, um, and I've uh, actually got the the interrupt uh, interrupt handler, which is spinning out the time onto my laptop screen, is also actually uh, driving the the AUI sound chip right now. Um, and there's a little uh, headphone jack on the side here, and just off to the side of the camera, I have this hooked up to a. This little guy over here. This is the uh, this is my my goat amp. Uh, it's a little little chip amp project I made a few years ago. It's got a Texas Instrument uh, TPA fifteen seventeen uh, stereo amplifier chip in it. And um, if I turn that on right now, you can hear every second there's a nice little uh, nice little ping sound from the 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 AY chip. Um, Obviously, I'm not showing off the full capabilities of the, the AY chip with, with this setup, but um, it's enough to show that it's working. Um, and so I, you know, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, with a little bit more programming, get to the point where I can play some, some proper chip tunes on this. Um, if you're into chip tunes at all, I highly recommend you check out uh, two bands, the, the AY, uh, three bands, the AY, uh, AY Riders, uh, the, the YM Rockers, and YM uh, Digital, these three groups all use the, the AY or YM uh, sound chips. Um, I forgot earlier actually, this was also in the, the Atari ST, another high profile example. Um, those three bands all make really great, uh, really great chip tunes with this sound chip and uh, it'd be really fantastic if I could end up finding some way to, to play some of their songs on the LM512. Um, so that's everything that's that's new for today. Um, as you can see, I'm actually getting to the point where there's very little room left uh, on the board. And in fact, what I'm planning to do next is to uh, implement a, you know, an expansion system so that I can actually build more stuff uh, off board. And so I've got some some sockets and things just kind of set in here while I'm trying to figure out what I can and can't fit in. Down here at the end, I have a um, a 26 pin uh, IDC. Connector, same same kind of connector you use uh, for the GPIO pins on a, a Raspberry Pi, um, and that should just be enough for me to bring the the data bus and you know some of the address bus and control signals off this board, so I can sort of plug in a ribbon cable here and build little uh, offboard offboard expansions. Um, I've got some parts on the way in the mail. I'm hoping to build a little uh, analog I/O expansion with an 8-bit digital analog converter and an 8-bit uh, analog digital converter on there which I can hopefully do some some cool things with but um yeah the 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 basic board for now is is pretty near complete and I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along so uh, yeah thanks for watching